So how can we increase our self-awareness and social awareness so that we can understand how we are coming across to those around us? And how can we improve on that interaction? How can we how can we improve? What can we do to maybe change that impact or effect that we have on others so that even if it is good, how can we make it better? But again, I, 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 I want to be careful that when I do that reflection, that I don't give myself the benefit of the doubt, which we like to do oftentimes as people, as leaders, is give ourselves the benefit of the doubt. Well, Noble, I'm definitely not like that couple or like that other, that other individual you talked about. I know I bring value to my team. I don't want to start there. I want to start from what value do I bring? What impact do I have? so that I, I don't automatically by default give myself rose colored glasses and miss out on an opportunity to learn and grow from blind spots. Welcome to the EQ Gangster Podcast where you will learn practical tools to grow your mental and emotional health and intelligence to be the best version of yourself both at work and at home. It is real, raw, and transformational. The journey of emotional growth isn't easy, but it's worth it. I believe in you. This episode is sponsored by Classical Conversations. Since 1997, Classical Conversations has been equipping families like yours with the resources to homeschool with confidence following a classical curriculum rooted in a Christ-centered worldview Alongside other families in a local community, homeschooling is doable with Classical Conversations. Check out classicalconversations.com forward slash Gibbons for more information. Again, that's classicalconversations.com forward slash Gibbons, G-I-B-B-E-N-S. EQ Gangsters, have you thought about what kind of vibe you bring to your family and your team. Your vibe attracts your tribe. Recently, I spent a significant amount of time with a particular couple and this couple, this couple's emotional baseline on a scale from one to 10, if 10 is super emotionally hijacked and intense, is a six, a five to a six. Their emotional baseline is a five to a six. And then it just goes up from there. What what I, I, so I realized a couple different things. And one of the realizations I didn't realize until we were not hanging out with them anymore, you know, we had left that event. One is because of the emotional intensity of this couple, it almost completely shuts me down. I have no desire to interact or engage with someone whose baseline is a five or six. Everything is emotional. The sky is blue is a very emotionally intense statement that would come from either one of them. And, and, everything is intense so that so so my one takeaway is it shuts me down being around folks like that i just want little to to no interaction the second thing is that i realized and this i didn't realize until after we were done interacting with them how mentally emotionally and physically exhausting it is being around this couple. And then I thought, 
because they have children, I thought, wow, if the emotional baseline of the parents is a five to a six on a quote unquote normal day, what type of, what are the consequences for those children being in an environment where it's, it's fireworks 10 times a day? What are the consequences? And in the organizations that this couple is involved with and a part of, you know, respectively for the husband and the wife, what what are the consequences and the corresponding culture that that couple brings with them into those respective environments and spheres of influence and circles that they're a part of? And then it made me think, well, man, what, again, what is, what is my vibe? Do I mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually exhaust people when they're around me? What, what, what is the consequence of my individual culture or vibe that I bring to a presentation a speaking engagement, a coaching client, an organization. What do I bring to the table? Is it net positive or not? What is the consequence? What are the ripple effects? What are the ramifications of my interacting with an individual, with a one-on-one conversation? Do I leave that conversation, that culture, that organization, that individual, that client better than when I first met them? Or was I like a a training battery that drains those around me? How aware am I of my impact on those around me? Thankfully, I am not emotionally needy anymore or or I, I definitely don't feel like I'm as emotionally needy or emotionally needy like I used to be. I, I know that for sure. Maybe there's still some, I don't know, I don't think there's any neediness in there. Uh, but I, man, but when you're coming from a position of, of peace and you bring that peace into a conversation, a presentation, a culture, a team, an organization, it, it completely changes the vibe of that organization. But if you bring in, you know, to that organization, anxiousness and angst and stress and intense emotion as a baseline, what impact that is that having on, on, you know, those different, those different people. There's another individual that I know whose emotional baseline is an eight and then it just goes up from there and in in five seconds I'm shut down and exhausted and as as a result as a consequence I I try to limit my interaction with that individual at all costs. I, 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 I want little to, to nothing to do with this individual because it is just draining, sucks the life out of me. So how can we increase our self-awareness and social awareness so that we can understand how we are coming across to those around us? And how can we improve on that interaction? How can we how can we improve? What can we do to maybe change that impact or effect that we have on others so that even if it is good, how can we make it better? But again, I, 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 I want to be careful that when I do that reflection, that I don't give myself the benefit of the doubt 
which we like to do oftentimes as people, as leaders, is give ourselves the benefit of the doubt. Well, Noble, I'm definitely not like that couple or like that other that other individual you talked about. I know I bring value to my team. I don't want to start there. I want to start from what value do I bring? What impact do I have so that I, I don't automatically by default give myself rose colored glasses and miss out on an opportunity to learn and grow from blind spots. The whole Jahari window, which I'm not going to explain right now, look it up, Google it. The Jahari window, it, you know, anyway, I'm not going to explain it, but it's the, it's the four windows and some of the areas we're aware of, some of the areas we're not aware of, some of the areas others are aware of, some of the areas neither myself or others are aware of. I think that's kind of the gist of the Jahari window. And so I just, I, I want to be objective in my inquiry. Now, also, I don't want to be judgmental with my journey either and, and guilt and shame and how I used to go about this process, which is I would start on a negative so now I, I don't want to start at a positive. What I used to do for three or four decades is I would start at a negative. Well, I know I suck and I know I, I'm worthless and I know I'm not adding value and try to work from there, which is also a brutal spot to try to start from because you're, you know, again, you're already going into your discovery from a very negative, jaded perspective and viewpoint. So now I'm just trying to to go about the discovery process, the journey from a neutral po uh, a point of view and perspective and try to maintain curiosity and a, and a treasure hunter mindset or a discovery mindset, like a metal detector mindset versus either a giving myself the benefit of the doubt or or not giving myself the benefit of the doubt and being negative, I just want to be, I want to have an objective mindset so that I can learn as much as I possibly can in my growth journey. So some questions to chew on, maybe, maybe pause it, write it down. And then here's another one. This is fire. This is fire. What's the vibe, not just of, of your own individual, right? What What's, how are you impacting the organization, but, and your family and whatever that organization is or that individual, what is your organization's impact and effect on those around your culture and organization, your customers? What is the vibe of your culture, of your organization, and how does the vibe of your culture and organization affect and impact your customers? your shareholders, your fellow units that you're, you're coordinating with, your fellow uh, military units or, or organizations that you're coordinating with or organizations. You know, some of the things that come to mind, Chick-fil-A, in my opinion, has a, a, a pretty amazing culture when you, anytime you go through the drive-through or you go in, it's a very at least it's been a hot minute since I've been there, but a very uplifting experience back in the days. I don't know. Again, it's been a while, but Southwest airlines had a very, very super positive culture that when you would get around either one of those organizations, man, you were, you felt better than when, than, than when you first showed up, you, you, you know, they added value to you almost immediately. And I'm sure there's a truckload of other organizations that have great culture, but but what is your culture, your organization's culture and vibe, and how does it affect and impact those that your organization does business with and interacts with? So, and then what is the relationship between you, your individual culture, your individual vibe, and your organization's vibe and culture. Lots to chew on, lots to think about. 
try not to be that draining battery, both individually and collectively, whatever your organization are part of, that drains the batteries of those around you and, and you find people avoiding you or minimizing their time around you so that they don't get their battery trained. Emotionally healthy people help heal other people emotionally. Unaddressed emotions don't get better over time. They actually compound. Emotionally healthy leaders create emotionally healthy cultures and organizations which lead to and create optimized and maximized results, outcomes, performance, and engagement.